Hi, my name is Bjorn Sorensen, and I'm an Applications Engineer for Hawkridge Systems. Today we're going to be talking about converting 2D geometry into 3D using SOLIDWORKS. What we're looking at on the screen here is a lever. This is made from aluminum sheet metal and was created using a 2D CAD program like AutoCAD and saved to a DWG file. Now what you'll notice is we aren't viewing this in AutoCAD. I'm using a program called DraftSight. DraftSight is a free 2D CAD program that was developed by Desult Systems, which is the parent company for SOLIDWORKS. If you're already accustomed to working in AutoCAD, this user interface should be very familiar to you. Uh, we have our drop-downs at the top, all of our toolbars, which of course are customizable if you're used to a particular arrangement at your current work. Um, we have our layer commands, our model and paper space on tabs at the bottom, and of course a command window. So for example, if I need to get a measurement off of my model, I can just punch in a familiar command and pull these dimensions directly off of my model. So we see, for example, that this was created out of two and a half millimeter sheet. Now to pull this into SOLIDWORKS, there are a few things that I could do. I could treat this as a 2D print and just recreate this geometry from scratch using the dimensions given. Uh, that could be a little tedious with a more complex part. I could box select some of this information and using Control C and Control V, just copy and paste that into a sketch in SOLIDWORKS. Or alternately, I could use the import tools already existing in SOLIDWORKS. So let's take a look at that option. So what I'm going to do is just open this DWG file directly in SOLIDWORKS. There it is. And this is probably a good point to mention all of the other formats that SOLIDWORKS supports. So I could also uh, open, in addition to DXF and DWG files, Adobe files, IGIS and STEP files, which are the two most common export formats, files from CATIA, ProE or Creo, Inventor, Solid Edge, or CAD Key. So of course what we're interested in at this point is this DWG file, and again I'm just opening this directly in SOLIDWORKS. So what I get is a DXF DWG import wizard, and there's a couple of options that it's offering for me to, uh, to create. I can either create a new drawing here, which is useful if I just want to create a print that I would need to get out to the shop floor and get this manufactured quickly. Uh, this also enables me to import the title block from a DXF or DWG file, which I can then put onto a SOLIDWORKS template and use for all of my SOLIDWORKS drawings moving forward. Alternately, I can import this to a new part, which is what we're going to be doing, because I'm interested in the actual model geometry. Let's say, for example, I want to use this lever in a SOLIDWORKS assembly. So I get a nice preview window of the DWG file. Uh, this, of course, has its own functionality. I could, for example, zoom in on my title block if I wanted to. Uh, you can pan around on this model. Um, so a nice preview window there. I get my units of imported data, millimeters or inches, since most of these 2D programs just measure in one-to-one -one and are sort of irrespective of units. I can bring in dimensions and constraints if I want, and I can pick individual layers to either import or exclude. One of the other nice features is this merge points closer than a particular distance option. So in a lot of these 2D programs, endpoints of different lines don't actually have to match up. And so if there was a little bit of maybe sloppy work done in a 2D program, we can automatically close up those gaps given a certain distance here. So I'm ready to import this geometry. And we're going to bring this in as three different sketches or three different views in a single SOLIDWORKS sketch over here. Now in addition I have these 2D to 3D tools and what this is doing is leveraging what's called glass box technology. So we have an imaginary glass box in our model and what we're going to say is for example everything from my front view is going to be on the front of this box. Everything from my top view is going to be on the top of this box and you'll notice that SOLIDWORKS has rotated that accordingly and everything on my right view is going to be on the right side of this box. So my sketches are now in the right orientation, it's just a matter of aligning them one to the other. So I can align my top view to my front view, again using these 2D to 3D tools. I can align my right view to my top view, 
And at this point, I'm actually done with this whole set of tools because from any of my principal views here, we can see that my drawings or my sketches are now all lined up. So exiting this sketch, I'm ready to extrude this into 3D. Using the familiar and easy to use SolidWorks extrusion tools, I can just grab a drag handle here. And what I'm going to do is actually snap to the existing model geometry in my top sketch. This ensures that my part is being made to the correct width. Uh, next, I need to cut away the interior because instead of being a solid part, this is actually a sheet metal part. So we'll select this sketch here and we'll make a cut extrude through all of our geometry. But since this sketch represents the positive geometry, we want to flip the side to cut. In other words, we want to remove our negative space. And now we have a nice looking sheet metal part. What I'm going to do is take this one step further and actually convert this to sheet metal so that SolidWorks recognizes it as such. So I'm going to select a fixed face here and I'm going to use a gauge table. So we're going to use aluminum metric units. And for that two and a half millimeter thickness that we measured, we need a 12 gauge material. I can collect all the bends in the model. SolidWorks instantly recognizes that there are already two bends existing in this model. And I can hit OK. Now before I go any further, I just want to ensure that my 3D geometry matches up to my 2D geometry. And I have a little discrepancy here where this curve didn't actually get conveyed. So let's create a new sketch. Leveraging the existing sketch geometry, I can just convert that entity drag the endpoints off the edges of my model to make sure that I get a complete intersection here. And then I can just extrude this cut as well. I get a nice preview arrow of the direction that I'm cutting and I can hit OK. And now I have a nice rounded corner. In addition to that, because we're using the sheet metal tools, SolidWorks is representing this corner as though it had been actually manufactured on a press break. And that's something you're not ever going to get from a 2D CAD tool. So the other major advantage to having converted this to sheet metal is that I can even get a flat pattern out of this for manufacturing. So going to a top view, we can see that I have a flat pattern complete with bend lines, and I even get a bounding box that I can measure to determine how much raw material is going to be required to cut out this part. Now, of course, I can export my flat pattern back into 2D as either a DXF or a DWG file simply by doing a File, Save As, DWG, and saving that out. I get a nice wizard that asks me how I want to save this and what geometry I want to export. I can add a new coordinate axis if I have a origin that's specific to the machine that I'm going to be using to cut this. And last but not least, I get a nice preview here that even enables me to clean up this geometry if, for example, I didn't want the um, hole cutouts to be done in my first cutting operation. Then I can simply remove these before I ever even save this as a DWG file. So that got saved out as a DWG file, and now again I can of course open this and manipulate it further in DraftSite if need be. So in today's video, we covered converting 2D data into 3D in SOLIDWORKS. For more useful videos like this, subscribe to the Hawk Ridge Systems channel. Thanks for watching.